Some people ask questions like, is there really a difference between a spool valve and a directional control valve? Or what a directional control valve really is? Today, I'm going to answer these questions and see whether directional control valves stand among the other valves based on various aspects. These aspects are valve function, valve design, and method of actuation of the valve. The valves we are going to check are helping us in various stationary industrial systems, such as this hydraulic lift, mobile applications such as construction machinery, or even aviation industries like this chopper. As you see in this sample schematic diagram, in these systems, there are other components than valves that we can talk about them in the next sessions. But now, let's concentrate solely on the valves. As the first step, we can classify the valves from their function aspect, or in other words, the tasks they perform. Our functional classification includes non return valves like check valves, flow control valves, pressure valves like pressure regulating valves, and of course, directional control valves like spool valves. In both pneumatic and hydraulic systems, valves are fallen into the same categories. But despite the same functional categories, it does not mean that a hydraulic directional control valve and a pneumatic directional control valve of the same types are interchangeable. That is, due to the different characteristics of different control media in pneumatic and hydraulic systems. Different characteristics of compressed air and hydraulic fluid will affect the size, operating pressure of the valve, and lots of other elements. The second step is subcategorizing the valves by the designing approach. Anyways, we were supposed to talk about the directional control valves, right? So, by now, I will merely focus on this category and will leave the rest of the valves for another day. Directional control valves, as you probably saw in a previous video, will direct the control fluid, whether it is compressed air or it is hydraulic oil, into different passages to control an actuator like this cylinder. I'll consider two subcategories for directional control valves. The first one is the poppet valves, and the second is the slide valves. Poppet valves have different types depending on the type of closing element that has been used in them. For instance, this is a simplified cross section of a disc poppet valve. When the valve is unactuated, the flow is from 2 toward 3. And when the valve gets actuated, the valve sits on the disc, and the path from 1 toward 2 gets open. How about the slide valves? Well, three different designs go into this subcategory. The first one is called spool valve. A spool valve can have a linear or a rotary mechanism. A spool is a piston that opens up and blocks the passages within the valve housing. For example, here, as you see in its side sectional view, spool movement is linear. So, we can call that a sliding spool valve. But in the other type, if we look at that from the top side, the spool movement is rotational. Thus, it is called a rotary spool valve. This rotary spool will direct the fluid into different passages as well. Technically, the name spool valve should not represent the directional control valves as a whole. Spool valves are actually a type or a subcategory of the directional control valves from the design approach. So, spool type directional control valve might be a better name to be more precise. Let's continue with the second type of slide valves, which is the longitudinal flat slide valve. If we look inside of that, its movement is linear, and as its name says, it has a flat design. You might also hear them as slide gate valves, as they are identical to knife gate valves. But unlike the knife gate valves, 
they are almost always used to shut off dry material like powders in chemical industries. It is very common to see them actuated by means of a spool valve and a double acting cylinder. The third type of slide valve is the plate slide valve, or better said, rotary plate valve. If we look at it from top side, we see this type of design also employs a rotational mechanism in that one rotating disc rotates against a fixed one, and in this way, the ports or channels will get connected with one another. Be aware to don't confuse this mechanism with a rotary spool valve. In the rotary spool valves, the holes in the spool and the ports on the housing will circumferentially match with each other. But in plate slide valves, the ports and the holes match with each other axially. All these categories and classifications set are according to our experience dealing with many types of valves in the industry. But you might face some other classifications by other instructors. For instance, you can put rotary spool valves and rotary plate valves into the same category as they both have a rotary mechanism and name them rotational control valves. Now that we've discussed the function of the valves in pneumatic and hydraulic systems and classified the directional control valves from the design aspect, Let's discover the actuation methods of these valves. There are various actuation methods to switch the position of a directional control valve. We can manually actuate a DCV using a push button, for example. We push the push button and the spool's position changes as you see. And this is the symbol of the push button actuation method. I will explain the symbols of the spool valves further in the next video. We can actuate the valve using a normal lever. Imagine a mobile excavator operator that uses these hand levers to operate different hydraulic directional control valves in the machine to move the bucket and other parts. There might be a detent lever that will hold its last position until the operator brings it back again. And finally, it could be a pedal that the operator will actuate it by foot. Among different types of directional control valves, the rotary spool valves and also the plate slide valves use manual actuation like a lever most of the time. An example of a mechanically actuated DCV is a roller-operated directional control valve or cam-operated directional control valve. For instance, the valve is fixed on a machine and as the machine moves, the roller senses an adjacent surface. In a particular position, it will operate the valve and move the spool to the other side. In the case of electrical actuation of a directional control valve, we need to use a solenoid on one or both ends of the valve. Commonly, the solenoid actuated spool valves are simply called solenoid valves. In solenoid valves, you might also see a small button on the valve known as manual override or mechanical override that is used in case of troubleshooting for locally testing the valve's mechanism without connecting the electrical voltage to the solenoid. Just be sure to use it while the solenoid operators are not energized, especially one on the opposite side, and if so happens, the solenoid will break. In some cases, you might see a spring on one or both ends of the valve. It is used to bring the spool to its initial or normal position. The spring return might be used in combination with other actuation methods. There are some applications in which we need a large spool valve with a high nominal flow rate. Therefore, a great force is required to actuate these valves. It obviously is difficult to actuate the valve either manually by hand or using a solenoid. In these situations, we use another valve to indirectly actuate the main valve, and we'll call that a pilot valve. The whole set is called a pilot-operated valve or a two-stage valve. The last but not least method of actuation is to use a combination of some of the aforementioned methods. 
For instance, this is a symbol of a double solenoid pilot-operated directional control valve with manual override and spring return. Let's take a look back at all of these actuation methods together. I will explain the pilot-operated directional control valves further in a future session. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.